Okay, that's good to go. Not yet.
So I got two packages of these, one in yellow and one in red. I got everything whole. Uh huh. Yes. Okay. You got two minutes. Two, three years ago, then we bought another one. Yeah. It was the exact same thing. We just went to a different company. Okay, here they are. Here they are. So the, they're starting. I, this is. Oh, yeah. The, this, this we'll see. Yeah. They didn't, but they did the other day. They used to do that all the time. There's him. Oh, it's six o'clock. All right, let's just do it on the phone. Now you're gonna have to lower that if you don't want to watch it. Do you want to be on camera or no? No. Oh, no camera. Well, I think I have. I have a picture. Okay. Yeah, use a picture. But do you want? Hello, world. How are you guys doing? Welcome to Chef Night. Thank you guys so much for joining. Beth Ryder here with the Ryder Elite team. We have Chef Food with us. Good evening, everyone. Thank the you for famous joining. Chef Food, just yes. so you know. He's famous. And Steve Ryder. So 
Let's talk about what we're making tonight. Hi. Tonight, we're going to keep it light and refreshing. Stay with those summer, hot summer months. So we're going to do uh, a Mediterranean orzo pasta salad. Wonderful. We are going to take some chicken breast and we're going to make a pesto, not a traditional pesto. Right. So traditional pesto is basil, pine nuts, parmesan, olive oil, a little salt and pepper. It is a paste like sauce. Okay. okay. So we're going to make a non-traditional one. We're going to make a pistachio tarragon to serve with our chicken to go over our orzo salad. Wonderful. And then we're going to kind of keep the drink light and refreshing with Absolutely. a muddled strawberry basil vodka. Yeah. Who doesn't like vodka? vodka? Right. Absolutely. Well, just like you said, keep it light and refreshing, right? So the strawberry, the basil, two ingredients go very, very well together on salads. Why not put it in a cocktail, right? So Follow it up with a little bit of vodka. Should be a sure deal. Love it. And it's summer, guys. So when we hit our real estate update, I have a special gift for the grandmas, the moms, the dads. If you have some kids out there that are a little busy for the summer, I've got a special treat coming for you. Awesome, that sounds great. Well, let's get cooking. Wait, mise en place. Do we have to start with everything in place? Well, we typically do want to have everything in its place, right? right so so first things to... first, we want to make sure that our oven's preheated. If your oven's not on, turn on 400 degrees. Uh, we have a skillet here that we're going to be searing our chicken in, doing a little basting okay. with our chicken. And then we have our pot of water going for our orzo. So first and foremost, we are going to want to get this thing rolling. Uh, the thing about the orzo is uh, this is a pasta, so it's very, very tiny. It's a grain-like pasta, mm -hmm. and it releases a lot of starch very, very quickly. So like when we make risotto, which is the opposite or rice-like, right. right? you got to constantly mm -hmm. stir it. So the, the orzo is kind of the same. You want to frequently keep that water moving or the pasta moving around in the water so it doesn't ball up and just starch together. Perfect. Now you've got some oil in there? I do have a little bit of oil in there. Then that way that collects any of the dirt on it. Also, when we go to dump this water out, that residual oil stays onto the pasta to help it turn on as well. So Great. nice little process. We do want to get our water going because we want to boil this and we want to cool this to make pasta salad. So this isn't going to be a hot pasta salad, even though you could probably serve it that way if that's what you were looking for. The orzo is pretty delicate, meaning that once that starch is released, you're going to have to add a lot of um, lubricant, if I may, to release the starches from each other so that that way you can serve it. To serve this as like a hot salad like we're going to do, we would need a lot more dressing, meaning the olive oil that we're going to be using to make the dressing. Perfect. So that's that piece. So that while that's coming up to a boil, we won't need anything right here right now. We see that our... Um, um, so we have our chicken, chicken breasts pulled out. Yep, they're all fine. Perfect. Uh, salt and pepper. I so happen to come across something in the cabinet here. If you want to grab that peppercorn which, mixture which right there. Use? That one right there. That the pink? No, your first one. Yep. Yeah. Oh, oh this So spice all of oh, yeah, yeah. If you have anything lying around in the cabinet, this being something, uh, you're going to go perfectly right along with our dish. Oh. So we're going to have lemon in our dressing. It's going to be in our pesto. Why not add a little more to the chicken? It's not going to over lemon it, but the combination of these flavors that's in here to add more flavor for our chicken, we might as well do so. Who is interesting what you find in your pantry to, to absolutely, add to the Absolutely. And like we said, we're not wanting to take the focus off of the pesto because the pesto is the main portion of this mm -hmm. dish, the star of the show, absolutely. so to speak. So that's what we're looking to do. So. While that's hanging tight over there, first thing we want to do is hopefully everyone has a device like such. If you don't, you don't necessarily need one. Um, we're going to make our salad dressing first for our pasta salad, okay. just so then that way the flavors can kind of mend together. But then the residual oil and lemon juice and what's in our salad dressing kind of is going to go into our pesto anyway. So oh, okay. instead of us having to clean the vessel, we can reuse it without having to really contaminate our next product, so to speak. So some examples, if I don't have this specifically, what what type of other processor, what about I, what else? You can I use? use just your normal kitchen blender will work. Okay. Um, you can use a fork, 
Basically, okay. it's incorporating the flavors together, okay. mixing the lemon juice with the olive oil. The reason we're going to do it in this is so we can combine that quickly, essentially is what it all is. Um, as it sits, though, it will separate due to the consistencies of everything. When we get into the pesto and as we slowly add the olive oil into that paste that we're making, you'll notice how it, well it will stay combined, but then as we let it sit, the oils will rise and the rest of the taste will fall to the bottom. So the Sounds puree, perfect. herbs, and uh, pistachios. Wonderful. So uh, <laughs> what we want to do is we want to get some lemon juice. So I got some fresh lemons here that we're going to want to break up real quick here. So then that way we can juice those nicely. These are nice handy dandy cup strainer. Looks hands. like a charm. Every time. So with this dressing, super light. I don't know if you, you know, Mediterranean dishes are always full of flavor and nothing that's too overpowering over the other one. Right? Right. So being able to get all the freshness of your ingredients that you're using is kind of their main focus. Right. So this dressing is super easy. Instead of using a vinegar, we're using the lemon juice as our uh, acidity level to it, right? Right. And you know, it is so hot outside right now. I mean, honestly, it's so brutal that it's so nice to be able to cook something that has, it's just so much more refreshing. That, so you don't want to eat something super hot and heavy. No, especially when you just travel in front of your car to inside the house. No, it's just that little bit is hot. Yep. So keeping it fresh, right? The goal in the summer is not to turn the oven on, right? right. So if you have a grill outside, by all means, you could grill your chicken. Talk about adding an additional flavor profile to right. the dish. So um, <clears throat> keeping the oven off is the main thing you want to do in the summer months for sure because it heats up your whole house and then you're running your AC trying to cool it back down so you're defeating the purpose of what you're trying to do anyway, right? Absolutely. But for time's sake, and we figured out grilling outside is a little tougher for the show. It is. It is. So I got some crushed red pepper in here. We're going to put a little bit of garlic into here. I've already had some garlic already nice minced up for that. So about one clove. And you know, there's such a difference between fresh ingredients and like even pre cut garlic. Why? I mean, it's such a difference. So, if you guys are thinking about you know, buying the pre, pre sliced and fresh things, it's so much, there's so much more flavor profile in the fresh. Well, and it's going to last a little bit longer. So, um, it's a good point. As far as like when they're crushed up in the oils or in the water, there's not, there's, it loses its integrity, right? Mm -hmm. So that freshness, like you're saying, you're not able to capture that with what we're doing. So by us doing this piece, then allow us to keep that garlic freshness. So we're just going to toast this for a little bit and we're just going to incorporate it enough. And as you can see, the viscosity changes due to the acid of the juice so you can see how it's almost one blended consistency and as it sits there for just a moment you can see the oil starting to separate from the lemon juice so we're going to zap this a little bit more and then like i said the ingredients that are in here are going to be able to go into our pesto just fine so we're going to take our dressing And get most of that out as possible. And actually, that made a lot more than I thought it was going to make. Yeah, which, which is nice. a long way. Yeah, which is nice. So you can use it next week for a marinade. So, I mean, it's very versatile for what it can do and what you're yeah, able absolutely. to do with it. 
I like that you're going to be able to reuse this container too with the because it has the right flavor profile. Yeah, and that's the beauty about it. So being strategic in the kitchen, making less dishes as possible. Right. Heat, right. Absolutely. So our water's just about ready to boil. Let's go ahead and get our orzo in. So then that way it has a chance to cool down before we put all of our other ingredients together for our salad. But once it gets in, you are going to want to give it a good stir all the way around. Kind of keep that pasta moving as it hits that hot water so that that way it doesn't allow it to ball up once those starches are released and then they just combine together. Right. <clears throat> I don't know if you know you ever seen someone or you yourself have just stuck spaghetti into boiling water and haven't really tried to stir it around or break it in half even it just becomes a giant ball. Yes, it does. Right? So this is the same principle. If you don't get that going, then by the time we come back to try to stir this, it's just a giant lump in the bottom of the pot. Not a good thing. Where you're just struggling for the rest of the time. Yep. I learned that a long time ago. Being an Italian family, a lot of pasta. Yeah, so there's just those little trips, right? Yep. That really help out the process. So we'll let that come down. That's going to take about 10, 11 minutes for that. I'm going to turn the heat down just slightly so that that way it doesn't have a continuous rolling boil, but it does have a good boil, which will help keep the pasta moving in there as well. Perfect. So then... I want. always notice that you fill your water up higher. Like normally I want to be a little lower because I'm always afraid it's going to like boil over. So that's one thing, keeping an eye on it, right? Yeah. But when we're doing this, we don't want to have, excuse me, Mr. Cameron. But we want to make sure that there's enough water in here to move around the pasta. Right. If we're using something smaller for this, once that pasta starts to Span. grow, Right. Once it's cooking and releasing those starches, it does expand, which is then going to take up the volume of our cooking vessel. We want to make sure that there's enough water in there to that be. as it expands, it can still continue. Otherwise, it just becomes creamy like texture. And then you're in a lot of trouble. Right. That's so, not the dish. Right. That, that, is not, that, is, that is not the dish. We don't That's want mush. We want to identify that this is an orzo so. pasta salad. And isn't it okay just to use any orzo? Like, is there a better orzo? Better I'm, worse? Not necessarily. They're all relatively the same. I mean, if, when you think about it, this is the Little scraps pasta. of the pasta. Right. Right. So they figured out what better way to do that. And I mean, this is a nice additive into like your salad. So our spinach, if we were to make something like this and put it on a bed of spinach as a salad, keep it light, keep it refreshing, able to incorporate some greens into the dish itself. So, And you feel like you're using a lot less plastic, it's just a little bit. Yeah, and it won't hit you as heavy, right? right. So you need some spaghetti or fettuccine, lasagna, hits you real heavy because you are ingesting so much of it. Right. right. And you don't realize it because it tastes good and you just eat it. It's <laughs> good. Makes you feel good. Right? Gotcha. So as this go ahead and this gets going, we can go ahead and quench our thirst. Oh, thirst first. If we want to. Uh, okay. Yeah, I guess we can get Should this going. The... Chicken. This gonna... usually takes a little bit of time. While we're then pausing. We'll make our cocktail. So we're going to get our uh, cast iron skillet going nice and hot. <laughs> We're not going to make a brown butter, but it's going to seem like our butter is going to get brown because our uh, pan is going to be so hot. Okay. We're going to want to get some of our fresh tarragon. Probably about that. Just one little sprig like this. It should be enough. Because what we're going to do is after we sear our chicken breast, we're going to baste it with butter a little bit to kind of coat the chicken, incorporate that flavor to the chicken breast itself. Okay. And then we finish it. Yeah. Yep. Got it. What are you guys doing at home to keep cool? Going in the swimming pool, keeping the air conditioner cool. What are you guys doing out there? It's so hot right now. Wearing your water socks inside. <laughs> yeah. I don't Putting know. a coolie around your neck. I mean, it's been brutal. Yeah, the humidity. The is we've been getting some good rain, getting a little humidity. It's a little cover. Yeah, so, I mean, right in these times, mm -hmm. 
the months of the summer here in the valley, you do want to make sure that we are staying warm. Staying hydrated is important. I was I was gonna say that really everyone needs to drink a lot. Lots of water. Lots of water. Lots of water. So as you can see, the pasta now, and we're just helping it continue to fluff itself, right? So it's allowing it to boil in there and move around so that that way it doesn't stick together. So our butter's coming up here. And the reason we're gonna use butter is because we're looking for that profile of right. flavor, right? And have that nice richness to it. So I wanna just throw out there that Sometimes when you make chicken breasts, they can be a little more on the dry side when you cook them without the bone, I think. Yeah, that's true. So by what we're doing tonight, we're all going to evaluate, make sure it's not dry, right? So searing, remember when yeah, we sear so meats, meat. we're going to keep the, the juices in the water content of the muscle tissue. We're going to keep it inside. And that's the important part of searing the meat. So that that way it seals it, right? So not just for steaks, chicken, chicken, pork chop, pork tenderloin, absolutely any type of whole muscle like this, you'll be able to do that. Way. So that's a good point. You know, it's funny we were making um, Steve made pork last night, and we even can sear the pork to keep the juices in because pork can also be very dry. Absolutely. If you don't do that, you're not able to keep those juices in there and they're all just gonna escape. Correct. And that's where you're gonna lose the integrity of your protein, right? Right. You know, in the appropriate cooking temperature in the oven, not too hot, not too low. You know, obviously low and slow helps break down the muscle tissue at a slower rate, which then allows not, it allows the water content not to evaporate right. due to the temperature of the oven. Um, but this process right here is something that's super simple, quick, and it's easy. And we're all going to work for juicy chicken. That's right. Flavorful, Flavorful. nice, tender, juicy chicken. The butter's going to help with that flavorful profile. I love that because a lot of times when you're at home and you're preparing dinner, you're thinking this just seems like a lot of work, but it doesn't take that much more extra time. No, and it's the, the end result, right? So what are you looking for? I mean, you want a, a quality or you want to just shovel it down? What are you doing? But when your guests are over, right? So when your guests come over and they see you doing like, oh, I never cooked chicken like that. And then they eat it and they go, oh my God. Why have I never cooked chicken I like know, that, right? Exactly. So, you know, that's what we do here on Let's Get Cooking and show you some of those techniques that you don't learn on the cooking channels because they just go to a commercial and pull it out of the oven and it's done, right? I know, they do. They show you the beginning, never the middle, but then the end. Right. So I always struggle with, you know, this piece of chicken is so much thicker yeah. than the rest. So we're so how do you get that? we can sear this longer. So if we cook it a little longer here, it's going to allow it to have pretty much the same cook time inside the oven. By just cooking this one a little bit longer yep. on this. So these are already coming off, but that's still on. Yeah, because you can see how much right, thicker so the press is. I mean, this one's a pretty good size too, but this one's almost like twice one, that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <clears throat> so it's just a little bit more here on this point than it is to do the other point. So now that we got a sear on them, we add a little more butter. Always add butter. Well, <laughs> for this process, because we're going to want to melt it, right? Yep. We're going to throw in our tarragon in here so all those oils can be released as well. We've got oil, orco boiling over there. Yeah, this guy, I'm going to go ahead and cut him off because we're going to need it to pretty much slow down. It looks like that's ready to be strained there. So I'm going to cut the heat off real quick. Uh, same thing like with your, so how do we tell if it's done? Throw it against the wall and if it sticks, it's done. 
no. no. It, won't, it won't work that way. But just like every other pasta, you can see what it's going to look like. So just kind of basting that a little bit. We grab our other ones here. Throw these bad guys back in. So now you're giving them the tarragon flavor? Yeah, we're helping that, that flavor profile get into there. Kind of browning up the butter nicely. Absolutely. Gives it a little bit of a nuttiness to it. And the smell, I mean, it smells so good. Get that hair gone down in there. All right, and these guys are ready to go into the oven. Wonderful. See, that was a good way to get that rolling. You guys are going to take about 12 minutes, roughly. Pasta, so let's see. Hold on. So we're going to want cold water running. And we want to get this cooled down as fast as possible. So if you can see, when we cut it open, it's cooked all the way through. See how that one's just got a little tiny bit left in there? Yeah. So as it's here, that will finish off. Finish off. Okay. Yep. Because that's where it's at, is that this, that's how much time is left that it'll finish right here while it's in this heated state because it's still cooking right now. Right. So tossing mm -hmm. it around. Pulls it off and continues to yep. finish. So then we're going to take a teeny tiny bit. Let's do this. Some of our dressing. Just to help it from sticking while we're waiting. Right. Good idea. Do you then throw it in the fridge? We can, yeah, but we're going to be able to let it sit here for a moment. We'll mix all of our ingredients. We want it to cool a little bit more. So instead of heating up our refrigerator by putting this in, we'll let it sit out here. It'll cool pretty quickly just at this temperature here. If you wanted to, you could take a cup of ice, dump it on there, keep stirring it around, and it'll cool it like instantly at that point. Right? That's a good idea. <clears throat> all right. Cocktail. Cocktail time. All right. Muddled strawberry basil mm -hmm. cocktail. So we're gonna need oh, fresh lime. Lime is always good in a drink. We're gonna need our muddler. We're gonna need a cocktail shaker. Club soda. Club soda. Is the honey for this? The honey's for that, yep. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we've already got some strawberries, fresh strawberries all cleaned up. I got them cut up a little bit. Nice. Uh, says into quarters, you can cut them up as fine as you want to. We're going to be mashing them anyway. I figured the more we cut them up. So what I did was I just took the strawberry and cut it in half like this and then cut it down so it makes smaller pieces like that. So then that way when we model it, it'll mush up a little bit more. So what we want to do is we're going to want to add our strawberries. We're going to want to add our chiffonade of basil, which is chiffonade is to be rolled up and chopped very, very thin. So it makes these stream-like wow, cuts. Really, yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to need the juice of lime. I just love the smell of those flavors. 
the lime freshness. with the strawberries and the basil, like that, the flavor is smells really good. Yeah, it kind of has that. Um, you know, almost when you're like making a Moscow mule or like yeah. that freshness of the mint. Yeah, Very, you know, you know, aromatic. Aromatic. Yeah. Mm. A little bit of honey in here. I'm going to take that in there. Mix it up good. I always notice when you go to a restaurant and they're making all these fancy drinks, they spend a lot of time muddling everything these days. It's a lot oh, of because work. of releasing, right? So right, you're releasing all the flavor. The oils of it, yeah, into the cocktail, as opposed to before times, they just shake it and call it a day, or they just dump it in a blender and hit it. Exactly. You know, but they're Very seeing different. how different the flavor profile becomes yes. when you change it. So um, mixology is a lot like baking. There's a lot of science that goes into mixing cocktails. Right. Putting them like this <clears throat> together, pouring everything on top is not the same. Yeah, absolutely not. Like just putting it all into there and stirring it will be completely different yeah. than when we get it in here to shake it up. Absolutely. It's interesting what's it right, is well, because you see how much work it takes. Even the bartenders at restaurants, I mean, they're, they're working it. They're working a lot of work. for sure. <laughs> Used to be different. All right, then uh, we're going to need two. So we're using uh, some Grey Goose top shelf for this type of uh, cocktail because this is what you're going to be tasting. Mm -hmm. So if you're using Fleischmann's, I would recommend not. But you do want to use a, a nicer vodka for this purpose because it's kind of like a martini style right? right yeah we're finishing it with a club soda so it's got a little bubbly but we don't want bad vodka taste we want a smooth finish right with our basil and strawberry flavoring so yeah i think everybody out there in the audience got tito which is a nice yeah right. which is a nice thing all right we're gonna need two so You want ice for me? Those can get ice. Fresh <laughs> garnish out of here. All that pulp from the strawberries. Yes, it looks delicious. A little bit of this guy. A little bubbly. Pop it off there. Always look so good. A basil loop there for you. If you don't got a nice 
Very refreshing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think out there? You guys like it? Your comments in the chat box? Yeah, super light mm -hmm. and very refreshing. So well, the, the club soda gives that nice light little bubbly and kind of takes away from that. Like it's not too strong either. So well, I was just going to say it takes that strongness of the block to the way. By you know, and then you get the strawberry and you get that basil flavor coming through at the end of it. It's really nice. Mm -hmm. Really good. All right. All right. Now we're moving on to our orzo pasta. You were uh we're gonna make our pesto first. Pesto first. Yep. All right. So what we're gonna want to do is get our spinach. What I've done with this already is I've taken some of the stems off. Uh, most of them, if they're real big, we want to get them out of there. Um, most of the time, baby spinach is pretty good about not having a whole lot of stems in there, but there will be some. So I just kind of clean it up a bit so that way it's a little bit um, easier to work with. So this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to want to add our basil in here. I'm just going to kind of help it a little. So I'll break it up some. Just so then it's easier when you get going here. You could rough chop this if you want. All I'm doing is just tearing the leaves apart. We're going to be using two cups of this. Then we're going to be using. some fresh basil. Same thing, I'm just gonna kind of set this up on the, on the board and then I'm just gonna do a rough chop to it, just so that that way it will blend together a little bit smoother in our pesto. Got that. And then our tarragon. These guys, we want to make sure that all we're using is just the leaves. So they're kind of delicate and you want to be careful with them. And all we're doing is just pulling off the leaf parts because that's a very fibrous um, stem. So it's going to be, it's not going to break down as you would like it to. It'll just be big old chunks of stem. So what I do is I find like a stiff piece here that's firm enough. And then you're able to just kind, kind of, of pull it down, pull it down like a rosemary. And then when you get up to the finer ones, you just got to finesse it a little bit. So that way we don't have big old stems in there. This is a, an underrated herb, if I must say so myself. A lot of people get turned off by it because it has that licorice uh, flavor to it. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely it's, the significant, not significant, but it has a certain very pungent flavor, right? Mm -hmm. But when you mix it with the right ingredients, it goes very, very well. So mushrooms, tarragon and mushrooms go so well together to do like a risotto, a wild mushroom risotto and put some tarragon, tarragon in there. Your cream of mushroom soup, slide a little tarragon. In. Oh, wow. Talk about elevate it to another level for when you eat it, you say, what in the world is that? Like what, what added that? Yeah, what is that, right? Interesting. And it's not all. And you don't think about it. Like, I don't think we go, oh, we should add tarragon. No. <laughs> and those are just the pieces, right? So just giving our leaves here a nice rough chop so that that way it blends up easier in here. So we got that. We're going to want to add our garlic. We're going to want to add pistachios. And we're going to want to add some lemon juice as well, as well as some lemon zest. And we've learned a lot about adding the lemon zest. The lemon zest, right? Talk about huge improvements to things when we do that. So we're just going to take our lemon, run it on the zester. Try not to get any of that 
pith in there, the whites, just trying just to get the, the outside zest. Yep. So every pass that I make, I'm using just doing a quick little turn. That way we can just capture the zest. So you definitely want to get all and this. And that little device is only a couple of bucks, maybe $10, but it's worth it. Oh, this, this thing's huge. huge. Yeah, huge. huge For a long time, we didn't have one, and it's really nice to have. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> if we were to add this zest into the muddle mm -hmm. of that cocktail, just a tiny little bit, you're talking just a little smidgen like this, and that cocktail would have a whole different flavor profile. Of you. Whoa, what's why is that so bad? It's nice. Okay, so I got our spinach or basil, our garlic, our zest. We're going to put our pistachios in. So pine nuts are the traditional nut used when making pesto. So pesto is a paste of herbs and cheese and nuts, essentially, with olive oil. So you blend that together, and that's what makes the, uh, the pesto. So why the pistachio versus the pine nut? Because uh, we're going to get the pistachio flavor and we're going to blend that with the paragon. And then the basil is just going to help it. Mm, it's, yeah, it's going to take, because basil and tarragon have a similar flavor. That kind of that licorice style, right? So tarragon's a little more licorice and the basil sweeter. So it's going to help take it in the other direction. We're going to want the juice of our lemon. A teaspoon, a teaspoon. Not there. And then we're going to blend this up first before we add our olive oil to it. So we're just going to want to give it a good pulse. And the reason we pulse it is so that that way, whatever goes to the top falls. It'll go to the top and it'll fall. The reason we want to do that is so that that way we can capture everything. So you see all the leaves up here on the side, especially yeah, how it's not, these aren't chopped in them. Right? So using a, a spoon or a spatula, whichever is the easiest, they're all pretty much the same, but you want to make sure that we're bringing all this stuff that comes to the top and stuck to the sides back down into our main paste here so that that way it can have a nice smooth texture. Now we can give it a good blend. We'll do it one more time. As you can see, the consistency is coming very, very um, equal, right? So it is really turning into that paste line. I don't know about everyone at home, but we've never made pesto before. I mean, this is great to see how to make this because you can buy it a lot of times. So this, when, this is so different. Well, when you buy it in a jar, it's been pasteurized. Right. So it has kind of that almost olive-like flavor to it, that mm -hmm. brine flavor, and that's from the ingredients they're using to preserve Serving. it as well. Exactly. Right? <clears throat> so that is going to give it a different flavor profile Absolutely. than the way we're going to make it. Absolutely. So I'm excited to have this fresh. Yep. <clears throat> so this one, uh, we're going to slowly add. We're going to add a little bit of olive oil at a time. Uh, so you could put some water in there, that'd be fine. So we're going to do a little bit of oil, a little bit of water, and then we're just going to slightly add that um, in separate ways so that that way you'll see that it be able to blend together well. So like making dressings, this is going to be a permanent emulsification. Once it's emulsified, it'll stay that way. Unless you have too much oil, then the oil will run to the top. So as you can see, I dressed them there. Now that oil is separating from the lemon juice just by the same lemon like that. Right. So you see the consistency now just by adding a little bit of oil and a little bit of water. Now we're getting to that actual taste like right. that we're looking for. So right now we've probably added half 
of our amount of oil that we needed to add, and you can see how it just wow, that changes nicely changes it, right? Absolutely. And it's incorporating it together, which is nice. So we're gonna finish off a little bit of water. We're gonna be able to finish off the rest of our oil here. So when we talk about using different oils in the cooking process sometimes. Why are we using olive oil today? We want that flavor here, here. right? And we don't want to substitute. You, right, you can, but you don't want to right. because the olive oil is an important piece to the flavoring profile here. If you were to use salad oil, canola oil, vegetable oil, uh, avocado oil, it'll be lighter in the flavor and won't have such a distinct um profile but also those are thinner oils so you'll be adding less of it this is a thicker oil so that way it's helping us maintain that taste type consistency so you can see our consistency that we have there i say we add let's add just a teeny tiny bit more oil not a lot maybe a tablespoon so, just because then that's going to be not so pasty there we go so if you can see it's thick but it holds and then it falls so it's a good Right, it's gonna coat our chicken well, but it's not gonna just be a glop on there. It's a nice smooth. Texture, yeah, that looks really good. Right, so real smooth. Everything's pretty consistent in there. That's what we're looking for for them. So that guy can sit aside. We should take a look at our chicken, and then we can do our market update. Good yeah. What did the chicken? How's that looking? Good. Steve, are you ready for a market update? You were born ready. How's everybody doing out there? Did you guys share any photos yet? Having a few cocktails together. Cheers, everyone. Um, any questions about what you're making tonight? You're a quiet group. <laughs> yeah. Do we have any questions out there so far? I know Tom's on. Uh, ben is on. Um, thank you all for joining. We really appreciate everybody joining tonight. And Steve and I wanted to talk a little bit about the market. How's it going out there, Beth? You know, um, our listing, active listing inventory has kind of settled down. We thank you. Can we wait to try it there. all? Well, okay. we, we've been going... Low, we're, we have less homes actively on the market than we did 30 days ago. All right, so let's put it in perspective. We've been going up and up and up and up. A typical market would be maybe 25,000 listings for sale in a typical market. Okay. And we've been going up to 20,000. We hit 20,000, 21,000. And now we start to So our typical market is 25. We're at 20. We kind of hit a new high for the summer. And it's all still based on what? Interest rates. Yep. And the economy. And the presidential election. So what I'm seeing is... What's going to happen the minute they raise those interest rates? Is raise or lower? I'm sorry, lower. Okay, lower. Thank you. They're going, everyone's going to rush out and purchase. So right now, I feel it's a great opportunity to go out and buy. And there's wiggle room right now with sellers being willing to give concession to the buyer. So where once we have that lowered interest rate, People might decide to get off the sideline and make a run for it and make offers on property. So we're going to have a bit more competition. So I feel like if I was going to buy today, I would rather buy today, wait for that interest rate to come down and then refinance next, but get the home I want today. Because I think it'll be more complicated and there'll be more competition. 
when we see that adjustment because everyone's waiting for it. All right, so a couple things. Like that? Yeah, so number one, yes, we have, right now it's a good time to buy the interest rates. If you're gonna buy a new home, you're gonna get Meritage is offering 4.5%. Yeah. So I'm just gonna mention one builder in the top 10, 4.5%. So you can get a lower interest rate and have them pay for it. There you go. And that cost, that would cost the consumer about 12 points times the amount of the loan. So 12 times five, if it's a $500,000 loan, that's $60,000. That the builder is giving to you to buy the interest rate. Number one. Number two, when the rates go down, the market is always ahead of the rates. Mm -hmm. So when the Fed says we're going to lower the rates, we've already lowered the basis points and they've come down from maybe 6.75 to 6.5. So the amount it's going to come down is not that much to start a landslide of buyers. The third thing, there's not that much product. So if you want product that is gonna be less maintenance, less overall cost in the long run, it would be a brand new home. Absolutely. Because almost, I think 90%, 91% of the homes are 30 years old or older. Meaning even if you have a tile roof, you're looking at $30,000 expense to replace the laminate just to make it leak proof. Right. So there's a little bit of moving going on right now. And I tell you guys, right now, she knows the market. So if you really want to be a little fortuitive and figure out what's going on ahead of time and what you personally want to accomplish, just give Beth a call and she'll help you, right? Absolutely. And we held our first um, first time home buyer get out of your lease seminar last night. Yeah. That was great. And we have it recorded. So if any of you have children that want to purchase, you're a first time home buyer or have family members that are looking to purchase but really don't know how to get out of their lease, we have some great options really that we uncovered last night that they can probably get into a new home for a thousand dollars or less yeah there is so some, ask us how. Yeah, yeah there's some down payment assistance programs that are available and zoom in now guys when i write a coloring book i make sure that every page has where you practice your penmanship and you actually practice a positive saying, and then the photo, go, the actual picture that you're gonna color for your kids is goes the message. That. So I do this for charity, and if any of you work for any charities, whether it be hospitals or uh, any kind of charity, this is the way I give back. So if you would like to give back to a local charity or give this to your kids or your grandkids, this is the way we give back. She gives back by giving you honest real estate information that she's, I mean, she's the guru. I can say that honestly. She's the guru. So we want to make sure that you guys reach out to us in the chat box or respond to our email chain. Let us know if you're interested in some of our coloring books. And they come with colors. Them. And they come with colors. And thank you guys for joining. And looks like chef's ready to go. So we're going to get back to cooking. Woohoo! Welcome back after our commercial break. <laughs> Thanks, Steve, for joining us on the nice market update. All right, so uh, oil, I want to say, is ready, and we definitely want to pull this out so it can rest. And how do you know, how are you able to tell that those are ready because they're pretty big? So just like a Here. steak, <laughs> okay? So this rare, okay. medium yeah. rare, medium, medium well, well done. Okay. Okay, so if you- Where do you want chicken? Here. Okay. So it's firm, but springs back. Okay. See how that firm springs back nicely? What do you touch that and see what you think? Perfect. Right? So that's right about there. So, well, if it's too stiff, when you press right here and there's no give whatsoever, this one there's give, but then it springs back. Okay. Right, right back. You saw got that? that. And yep. it's got a nice little firmness to it. Okay. So. Just making sure we're all on the same page. Yep. That's good to go. Okay. So let's let those rest. 
No, we you still want to let it rest in the pan. Yep, that's yep. perfectly fine. Okay. We got them pulled out. All those juices are now flowing back into there. Got it. If you wanted to, you could take a little bit of your pesto and put it right on top, zap it right back in for like shh, a minute. If you wanted to broil it real hard to like kind of crust it on there, you could do that. So um, if we would have pulled this out three minutes before, put a little pesto on there, finish it for the three minutes, the pesto would then coat and stick to that. We're not going to do it that process just because of when we plate up, we want that pesto to kind of do its thing. Okay? So you can have it crusted on there. So just, also a great idea. I mean, yeah. It's nice to do. So uh, salmon would be a great, another dish that we could do the same principle with. So we could put There's our pesto, pesto onto salmon. Oh, I love that idea. Delicious. Yeah. Something that's a little different. Tarragon goes very, very well with the salmon. So. Great idea. So what we got now is we have our cooled off orzo here. And as you can see, see how it's not stuck together? Oh, yeah. That looks great. Huge piece, right? Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that that's it. Because this stuff's so finicky. It'll just form a ball. And then you'll never be able to get it apart. Love that. So when you shock it, it's a big piece to that. But also, we added a little bit of oil to there. We just used some of our dressing. Perfect. Added it, tossed it in, because it's already going to go into that anyway. Right. So now how do we finish this up? Uh, I got some cherry tomatoes. I got both sliced in half, yellow and red. So these ones, yeah, are grape, and these ones are cherry. They're all relatively the same. Slight difference in flavor, not a whole lot. Typically, it's the size itself, but nice there's a little adds different color. Does add color, so we want it to be nice and vibrant. Okay? So uh, I got a yellow bell pepper. I got a red onion, and we're gonna add some feta cheese to that with our dressing, and then some fresh parsley as well. So when we're working with something like this, we want to right identify how big of a piece of vegetable do we want. Since our right. tomatoes are about that big, we don't want our onion to be that big, right? No. The reason I cut the tomato uh, in half this way, as opposed to ripping it like down. Like this side, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to find one, here we go. So the reason I cut it this way instead of this way is when I cut it this way, it keeps the integrity of all the insides there together. So when you take a bite, you get that. Of Instead of having them fall out. And if we were to cut it the other way, as we mix it in here, all of that would then go in oh, there. So the difference of cutting them in those different ways. It's like right? a little cup. Right. So it'll keep its integrity like that. Like if we that. were to cut it the other way, then it's most likely going to fall out. When you do this. So, um, with the onion, I'm trying to debate on if we want to go in half and do real thin, almost like half of a julienne, so that it's there, but not there too much. Um, I'm thinking that that's the route we want to go because we do want to have dimension in this. So we're going to slice it real fine like this. So that way it will stand out, but it won't be a super punch to the taste bud when you get a bite of it. Got it. Right? I mean, you can dice it as small as you want to or however. Uh, I like to do them slightly different so that that way, when you present the salad, it will present these things instead of it all just being so uniform that there's no real difference right. of what's going on, right? And we'll take our bell pepper. Kind of same with this guy, try to get it julienne as thin as possible and then we'll break these down into smaller pieces as well so you can see just about the same size as that a little bit larger than the orzo not too bad though right um, what do you say? Add a little bit more bell pepper to I that? I think so. There's, right. a, there's quite a bit of more so. I think so. So we'll take half of this other half here. Yeah. Break these juliennes down. Go there. We're going to take some of this fresh parsley. And this one, remember, we want to ball it up nicely. I've already pulled most of the stems on this. 
Because all we're wanting is the leaf in there. We don't want any stems into our salad. I'm trying to get a, a nice mince if we can. Just so that there's not super big chunks of that in there. You get it. And some of our tomato here. Wow, that's starting to come together. You got a lot of colors going on. Yep. We're going to do this first. We're just going to give our dressing a stir. We don't want to pour it all in there right away because we want to mix it around and see what it looks like before we add too much, right? But as you know, if you were to mix this and let it set, it is definitely, right. it's well in the noodle, right? The orzo is going to absorb the dressing. So if you were to make this and let it set a little bit, definitely reserve some of your dressing. So when you pull it out to serve it, when your guests get fresh. there, you can add a little bit more to freshen that up. Yep. All right, Beth, what do you think of that uh, consistency of everything? I mean, everything looks good. Looks like a nice mix of it. Mix, mix of everything. Maybe a few more tomatoes. Little maybe? tomatoes. All right, let's go. I agree with you. Let's go a little more tomato in there. It ended up making quite a bit of orzo. Yeah, that little bit. I mean, Went that, a long way. That box <laughs> does go a long way. I figure. Like, I'm surprised. Since we only like have this much of our other stuff, let's go ahead and add it as well. Looks like it needs a little more purple in there. Mm -hmm. Really got. But enough, the nice thing about this pepper. is anything that's left over you can eat later because you're just going to throw it in the refrigerator. So it's kind of nice that this could be sitting around for a couple of days. Absolutely. In the fridge and kids can eat it. Really I, a great little light. Well, another thing, talk about meal prep. Right. Right. Again, you could have it with tomorrow's night dinner. We're not center. Or, or you, you eat it today and then you can have it for lunch on, you know, you make it on Sunday and you have it on Tuesday, Thursday for your lunch. Breaks up the week, still have something that's there. And fresh and light. Yeah, especially during these hot months. And there's not a whole lot. You're not eating too much pasta. Like I said, we could take a scoop of this and put it on to um, our... Uh, With the spinach? Onto our spinach, yeah, salad, and then we're good to go. So our yeah. last ingredients here, we're going to want to add some of our Kalamata olives. So I'm just draining out the liquid. These guys, people are fans of and people aren't fans oh, of. Oh, I'm a fan. I love these olives. Use them sparingly <laughs> at first. I know because I love them. Steve hates olives. You know, everybody has like a love-hate. So if you don't like them, you can leave them out. Or if you want to add black ones or green ones, right? Or no olive. Or no olive. Papers. One thing that we found That's out true. last month, you can add papers. Paper. Yep. Yeah. And just be careful of it because they are salty, right? So same thing with the olives. Same thing with our feta cheese. The reason we haven't added any salt and pepper yet is because we're adding. We're adding it all here. <laughs> with these other foods, right? Absolutely. Which I love about cooking like that. You yeah, just add that. Absolutely. The the salt is in the olives. So let's add here. I want to save it just a little bit for Garnish. presentation. Let's add a little more of our dressing. So we can give that a stir like right that. Okay. All right, go ahead and give that a nice light toss. I mean, really, it's starting to come together where you can see all these colors and flavors. It's almost like you can taste all the flavors. You right can. Now. I mean, it's, it's nice when it's pretty even. Yeah, and that's the right. That's your goal. You don't want things to overpower each other. You want to be able to have a nice blend of everything so that that way the dish comes together well, right? And that's really what it's all about. So then we'll grab us okay. a container. Out of your here. way. Okay. Nice little bowl like this. Make 
should we get some of everything? Oh. Oh. <clears throat> nice little additive to that salad, little protein mix there. So those do add protein, I guess. I don't think I ever knew that. Huge amount of them. Really? Yeah, okay. How many of you guys eat those at home? I I can honestly say we do not put them in. They're great in salads. They're great to so like if you're uh, a vegetarian, mm -hmm. make uh coconut curry with the and that amount and there's your protein source that is great that? with all the other flavors yeah they absorb it very very well interesting good to know we only learned take something in here some of our chicken breasts here so as you see see that see that nice juiciness yeah. there wow that's the key. Right? And I love slicing it this way. To me, that's the best way to have your chicken sliced on top of your pasta or rice. It makes it easier, right? right. So it's and the whole process. Right. How do you how do we simplify it? So we're just gonna fan it out. Oh, that looks great. Such. We're going to take some of our pesto. How's everybody doing at home? Are you guys just plating or eating already? Don't forget to mention in the chat box what's going on. Photos. Kind of have a quiet group tonight. Oh, that's that's cute. Wow, Chef, you've outdone yourself. That looks amazing. Something easy, simple, right? Wow, so amazing. Let's get you everybody there and um. Oh, we're getting our final touches. There you go. So next time, July 18th, we have shrimp pad thai. So I've never heard of that Not before. July 18th. Today's July 18th. Oh, it says Thursday, July 18th. That's there you go. It's the wrong day. Thank you for joining us Yeah, today. thank you for joining us today. <laughs> so next month, we're going to do shrimp Not July. Yay. That's right. All right. Should have got that. Anyway, we'll give you guys that date. I don't have it right here. The shrimp pad thai. Shrimp pad thai. So pad thai? Uh, yeah, traditional Thai dish. Shrimp pad thai, it's a stir fry shrimp dish with rice meat. Wow. So something, tons of flavor in there. Tons and tons. Well, I'm looking and, forward to it. And this one that's nice is you get to make it as spicy as you want. Oh, so I got it. I'm going to allow the crew likes it here. Yeah, but like at it home, if not so much, you can keep it low key and to your liking. So. What's well, our drink? Know. Sake? Uh, I can't remember what our cocktail is. But not. Well, we're going to get that in the email to everybody. So thank you all for joining. Enjoy your dinner. And we love having all of you. And thank you for the Writer League team. Don't Enjoy forget, if you want coloring books, Let they're free. All right. Bye-bye.